Even if you've been learning French for a while, maybe bread is still pretty tricky for you when you're visiting France because we have so many rules and customs and so many potential embarrassing mistakes that you can make. So today I'm going to teach you five of those rules and customs that we have in France with French vocabulary. You'll see everything will be easier afterwards and I will be able to eat this delicious baguette. Bonjour, I'm Géraldine, your French teacher. Welcome to Comme une Française. I'm here to help you speak every day modern French with confidence. C'est parti, let's go. This is what you will learn in this lesson. If you're a beginner, focus on the customs around the bread just for the fun, it's fine. If you're intermediate, learn the French vocabulary around it. And if you're advanced, try to focus on the examples as well. Saucé, saucé, saucé. Do you know what saucé is? Saucé is essuyer la sauce qui reste dans son assiette. Essuyer la sauce qui reste dans son assiette. And you do that with bread. So can you do that? You should take... Oh, I can do only that once. <laughs> you can take a bit of bread like that. Ah. Uh, It smells even better from here. And you just wipe the sauce at the bottom of your plate. That's saucer. Saucer. That's to mop up the sauce from your plate in English. For example, j'aime bien saucer mon assiette après avoir mangé du bœuf bourguignon. We start. J'aime bien saucer mon assiette après avoir mangé du bœuf bourguignon. I like to mop up the sauce from my plate after eating bœuf bourguignon. Here, if you're advanced, you notice that once I made la liaison with après and the second one I didn't because you can do it or not, it's fine, okay? Just for advanced students out there. So can you do that? Yes, you can. It's fine. I mean, uh, if you're obviously invited to eat at the president's table at l'Elysée, his house, don't do it, maybe. But if you're at my place, at a friend's place, it just shows that what you ate was really good. So I just asked my friends around me, would you do that? Should I tell my students they can? They said, yeah, you can. So you can do that with your fingers, avec les doigts, as we say in French, avec les doigts. So you take a piece of bread, That's a big one just for you to see, but you can take a smaller one. And you mop up this, the sauce from your plate, or you can put it uh, at the end of your fork, for example, and mop up like that. Avec une fourchette, as we say in French. So you can do that with les doigts, avec les doigts, just like that, or at the, at the end of a fork, avec une fourchette, like that. Okay, that's more polite. At home, I do it with bread because I love bread and I love sauce and I love showing my uh, host that I enjoy their meal. Now let's talk about another one that was suggested by one of my students uh, three weeks ago. I was doing a webinar and he asked me, can I do that? That's tremper. Tremper, for that I'm going to use another prop, that's un croissant. Mm. Un croissant from this morning because I bought it at the boulanger on my way to the studio. So that's un croissant. Can I do that? Uh, dunk my croissant in my coffee in the morning? We say tremper son croissant dans son café. Tremper son croissant dans son café. So my mom is watching this lesson and she's very probably horrified because I will say, ah, yeah, you can do it. She hates it. My dad is not allowed to do this when she watches. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan, but I did it uh, on Sunday because I, I got my best friend in the afternoon, on Sunday afternoon for board games afternoon. And I made wonderful biscuits and she made a uh, hot chocolate and I dunked my biscuit in the hot chocolate, which was so good. You can do it. It's very French. Again, don't do it when you're a very fancy place, but when you're at home, alone, with a few friends, you can absolutely do it. It's fine. It's supposed to be very French. So if you're in France, enjoy it, do it. Here is an example with tremper. Jeanne trempe toujours ses tartines de confiture dans son bol de chocolat au petit déjeuner. 
Jeanne trempe toujours ses tartines de confiture dans son bol de chocolat au petit déjeuner. I have to admit that I always do that with butter, bread and a big bowl of soup. That's my favorite thing in the world. And if it is yours as well, you can say c'est trop bon. C'est trop bon. It's everyday modern French for it's really good. We say c'est trop bon, it's too good, but it's a way to say c'est très bon, it's very good. So c'est trop bon, it's delicious. C'est trop bon. And with un croissant, that smells so good, it's perfect. Our third example is a tricky one because it's not something that you can or cannot do. It's just a rule that I wanted to tell you about. It's about mettre le pain à l'envers. So, uh, you can see here, a baguette. That's l'endroit, the top. And that's l'envers, the bottom. Depending on what you like the most, you might like this part, this part of this part. It's really up to you. Uh, but the bread... You should not put it upside down. So, mettre le pain à l'envers is like that. Don't do that. And some people might tell you, quand je vois du pain posé à l'envers sur la table, je ne peux pas m'empêcher de le retourner. Quand je vois du pain posé à l'envers sur la table, je ne peux pas m'empêcher de le retourner. When I see bread upside down on the table, I cannot resist the urge to turn it up again. So, for lots of people, it's a reflex, a reflex. They see it upside down, they will put it up. And uh, it's supposed to be bringing bad luck. We say it's, ça porte malheur, ça porte malheur. But, if you want to have fun in France, and you want to test what I teach you, which is very often a very fun way to actually learn things, you buy breads and you put it upside down on the table, and you wait for the first person to put it up. They won't resist because it's like an urge. It's like, I can't see that bread upside down. I have to put it up again. And I play that because um, I work in a co-working space here in Grenoble. So I have lots of wonderful people working around me. We do, they don't work for me, <laughs> just like we work at the same place. And I test things on them. So they're going to eat this bread for lunch, obviously. And uh, I did it. I put it upside down and I waited for someone to put it up. And she told me exactly that. I could not resist putting it up. It just freaks me out when I see it upside down. So again, it's not a matter of thinking everything is going to collapse around you. It's just a urge they have in order to put it up. So test it. It's very fun. But try not to do it because for lots of people, it's bad luck. Mettre une assiette à pain. This is a very quick example that I wanted to tell you about because um, in France we don't use uh, plates for bread. We don't use assiette à pain unless again you're in a super fancy, super, super fancy place. But usually people's places are not like that. So the tradition is put the bread, uh, your piece of bread for example, I'm going to keep the one that I used before. Uh, you're eating the bread, you just put it on la nappe. La nappe is a tablecloth. It's usually clean, <laughs> unless it's not, which you should not be dining there. Um, but you put your piece of bread on la nappe. La nappe. Le pain se pose sur la table. You put your bread on the table. Sometimes you might put it on, the, um, on your plate, like on the side of your plate, depending on, I don't know, what you're eating. For example, you're eating cheese, you put your, your, your bread on the plate because you're eating both at the same time. But the idea is that there's no uh, bread plate in front. It's not a mistake of putting, if you're putting any, but it's just not a use that we have. However, we put the bread in la corbeille à pain. La corbeille à pain is the bowl where you put the bread. You cut it and you put the bread in it and everybody can help themselves with bread. La corbeille à pain. And at last, something that drives me crazy when I see it. I saw my partner do it once. I almost left him in the middle of the street. <laughs> Let's croquer le bout de la baguette. Croquer le bout de la baguette. Never, ever do that. And never do that in front of me. Croquer le bout de la baguette. When you're buying bread and you're coming back uh, home, on your way you can eat some bread. That's fine. And same at home. Uh, but you never eat it like that. Ah, 
I'm not going to put my lipstick on the bread. Ah, never do that. What you do is what I did at the beginning. You just put both of your hands and you cut yourself a piece of bread. And also it shows that the bread is good because you can actually do it. And the fun thing is I usually tell my students, um, when you're in France and you have a boulangerie, I'm going to take the bread again, look at how it comes home. If you have the end missing, it usually shows that it's good bread because you cannot resist eating le quignon. Le quignon is this part, the end, le quignon. We also call it le crouton, depending on who you're talking to. They're equal, just regionalisms. Le crouton or le quignon, it's the end. And usually, for me, it's a sign of good bread. I cannot at all resist eating the end. Um, to me, it's a sign of a good baguette. But again, never do ah, no, ever. I've seen that uh, twice on YouTube recently. It horrified me because it's like, ah, I think it's disgusting to do that. And I saw that in a, in a program on Netflix as well. And that did not make me happy at all because the, it didn't show something that French people were doing. And uh, if you want to cut the bread at home in order to put it in la corbeille à pain, you might use un couteau à pain. Un couteau à pain is a bread knife. It has like little um, teeth in it, un couteau à pain. Un couteau à pain that you might use at home in order to cut the bread properly and put it in la corbeille à pain. This is what you should do if you have une corbeille à pain. So what did you learn today? We saw saucer la sauce de son assiette. Saucer la sauce de son assiette, which is to mop the sauce from your plate. Tremper son croissant dans son café. Tada! Le croissant, le café. That's a lovely cup that a student sent me, which I love. So you could, you can do it if no one is watching or if no one is offended by that, but it's really a matter of taste. Just depends on the people. It's supposed to be very French. Tremper son croissant dans son café. We have also mettre le pain à l'envers. Don't do that because it's bad luck. Mettre une assiette pour le pain. Mettre une assiette pour le pain to put a plate, especially for the bread. It's not a bad thing to do. It's just something that we're not used to. You can do it, but I don't even own this kind of plate and I don't know anyone who does. It's absolutely not common in France. And at last, croquer le bout de la baguette. So, ah, like that. Never. It's just, ah, it's disgusting. <laughs> just cut it with your hands and eat a little piece of bread. If you love French food, check out this short playlist that I put together for you. It has lots of elements about French food that you will love. I will see you in the next video. A tout de suite. See you there.